This video will be very long, so I suggest that you use the timestamps in the description below to skip to whichever part you are interested in. In high school, we were in the science and technology department. Like, it's divided into two. Is that you go to the arts class or you go to the science class? In science class, you learn mathematics, further mathematics, chemistry, physics, and biology for some, and maybe technical drawing. Or you also take courses like database and maybe computer studies. So that decision, right from time, has already set me up for a particular field, which was engineering. That is, after graduation from high school, it was already stuck in my brain that I would just want to go into engineering. But which department in engineering faculty, I did not know yet. The university I got into back then had three major reputable departments. Of course, at that time, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not really about what you want, it's about um, which department can you get into with your grades. So I, I, that system is like, okay, you write your exams, you get your results. If you score really high, you get into a department like mechanical engineering because it was the most difficult to get into. We also had uh, departments like electrical engineering, systems engineering, and then computer engineering was not even a department on its own. It was a sub-department, another department in electrical engineering. Thankfully, according to the cutoff marks for computer engineering and other um, similar departments, from previous years, I feel like, okay, computer engineering will be a good deal. So in that university, in the first year, we took physics, chemistry, algebra, math, and calculus. In year two, we took calculus two, mechanics of materials, signals and systems, circuit theories, differential equations, engineering drawings, and statics. If you just look at the distribution of courses in these two years, you'd realize that it's more related to electrical engineering there is very little in fact there's almost no course related to coding or related to software development because i was in that school for two years before actually um, coming to turkey to study i had already a defined notion about what computer engineering is about when i was applying to universities abroad i always chose computer engineering the thing is i never questioned myself about the um, interest or where i saw myself in the next five to ten years which i think is a mistake that we all make but i also understand that okay at that age maybe we really don't know much we have very little knowledge and uh, it may be difficult to decide that's why it is good to actually seek the help of a counselor or a teacher or speak to people who are in the industry already working and speak to one's parents as well. So I'm now in Turkey. I got into Ajitepe University, thankfully, which is actually one of the best universities in Turkey. Me studying computer engineering for one and a half years, almost two years in a previous university, I thought that would be an edge for me. You know, when I get here, I thought I would be able to um, easily go through it. But then that wasn't the case. It was, it was like a blow in the face, you know, like I was just shocked. Why? And I'll show you. Here on my tab, I have opened the academic curriculum at Ajitepe University. And I want to show you these courses we took in the first semester. We took Introduction to Programming 1. We learned Python, everything you need to know in Python. We learned variables and types, objects and data structures, indexing and slicing, comparison operators, for and while loops, functions, lists, dictionaries, and tuples. Look, this is nothing in coding. Like, this is, these are the basics, truly. And it's actually Introduction, as it is stated here. But for me, it was like, I've spent two years in another university. I've never taken any course in coding. And then I'm coming here and I'm learning all this in just one semester. I couldn't believe it. And that was affecting my studies in mathematics. Mathematics one, two, three is actually calculus. Like in this course, we finished calculus one and two in the first semester. <laughs> we finished calculus one before midterm exams. <laughs> I was, I was just shocked, like, why are they rushing us? Okay, now let's come to physics. Physics felt easy. We do motions, slope, the mass of this, mass of that, acceleration. I think this was my best course. Until I did my midterm exam, I got like maybe less than 50 over 100. 
and I was wondering why. It was very, very difficult to keep up despite my experience in computer engineering. And that brings me to my first point of why I regretted studying computer engineering. Because of the difficulty level, I did not know how rigorous the curriculum at my new university was. So this is the first point. If you want to study computer engineering or whichever department you want to study at all, it is important for you to check the curriculum. And I want to emphasize this by taking you through the curriculum at different universities. Here I have opened um, one university in India, Bachelor of Tech in Electrical and Computer Engineering. These names are important. So for some it's Bachelor of Science in Computer Science, for some it's Bachelor of Science in Computer Engineering, for some it's Bachelor of Technology in Electrical and Computer Engineering, for some it's Bachelor of Science in Electrical and Computer Engineering. These differences matter a lot because for some universities, maybe you wouldn't learn, you wouldn't have to take anything in digital electronics, or if you have to, maybe it will be just one course. For example, in HGTP here, we did not take anything related to electronics until the fourth semester, Introduction to Electronic Circuits and Systems. While in this university here, they teach it right from your second semester. So these differences matter, so that when you're actually in this department studying, you'll be able to find fun in what you're doing. If you're somebody really interested in coding, really interested in learning java python html css c and all these things and you look at this curriculum if you click on it of course it explains there what they are going to teach then you are going to say oh maybe this one is more convenient for me because in addition to my coding i'm just going to take math and physics but here if you're thinking of you know going the technical route you want some things in electrical engineering you want some things in computer engineering then maybe this one is more convenient for you this is a university in the uk and then here okay algorithm design analysis in your third year algorithm in hgtp for example is in the fourth semester so you start with python you do Java, you come here, you learn C++ data structures, and then here you learn algorithms, which is not connected to any language. Yeah, but to practice, to code, maybe you can use Java or Python. So that's it. Like, it's important to actually go through different curriculums for you to understand which one is actually good for you. Even if you don't want to look at different universities and start analyzing their curriculum, you can choose two universities or three universities. Even if you decide to go with a curriculum that's probably not um, what you want, at least you'd have prepared your mind for what is about to come and you know um, exactly what to expect. One of the problems for me was that I did not even know what to expect and it was difficult to keep up. All right, so now you may ask, Bowser, it was difficult for you to adapt. You spent one semester you thankfully passed all your grades so what about the second semester what about the third semester how was it for you couldn't you keep up yeah that's the thing i still couldn't keep up why because it was difficult and i was not interested so lack of interest is my second reason most important reason why studying computer engineering was difficult for me and why i really regretted choosing that department coding is oh coding is cool you can do this you can tell the computers to do that but i don't really see myself in the future coding i don't see myself in the future um, sitting in front of a computer and looking at how to build systems. I, I just couldn't, you know, picture that in myself. So what was the point of learning all this? Because I couldn't find that connection back then. It was difficult to continue. So to actually counter this, if you find yourself in this state, what I think you should do is type on Google, what is the importance of this and how can this be applied to real world situations? That would help you understand problems that can be solved with that concept or with that knowledge and maybe if you take interest in that problem then you find some joy in learning that concept again Our first year was entirely online because of COVID, so we didn't have any chance to meet anyone. We just knew each other by name or WhatsApp. We have, I had never met any of my classmates, and even if I met them, I wouldn't recognize them. Now, I met this guy who was also kind of finding it difficult, and then we could um, share how we overcame the previous semesters and then we started um, you know working together studying together so first of all it became more fun and then i realized that after acing the midterm exams at um, 231 which is logic design and 233 logic design lab these ones were about um and gate or gate you know nand gate and all these things which i had studied before they felt familiar to me i was able to understand and the teacher oh god bless her 
God bless her so much. She was just so focused on we understanding rather than setting tough questions for us. I was looking forward to attend her classes. I was never late. It was like my big joy every week, you know. And then every time she gave the assignment, I was always ready to answer it properly. And I enjoyed writing the report. So because I finally found something, even though it was just one, it, it felt like, okay, if I can do this, maybe I can somehow find my way around the remaining courses and then there's this other course too ait 203 which is about <laughs> the history of turkey and i found myself really enjoying this course these two courses really helped me understand that maybe i'm not really that of a technical person and then i was also making youtube videos and i realized that i was really having fun being able to edit and being able to script videos and you know speak to the camera so i thought maybe this was an advantage for me and that was how gradually I started looking for patterns in things I, I loved doing. Well, still, it wasn't really that easy because I remember it was in this same semester that I took the receipt exam for one of these courses at Discrete Structures. At the end of this semester, I remember I had decided to switch departments from computer engineering to business administration. I finally found that, okay, I love a little bit of mathematics and computation, but I don't really want to go deep, okay? It seems I really like writing, I like analyzing, I like, you know, looking at history and how to uh, move forward. I like teaching, maybe uh, making videos like this. Maybe I could move into something more related to management and analysis. So I was looking at business administration because it was like a balance of, you know, verbal and quantitative reasoning in their courses. So I went to the department, I spoke with some lecturers there and the, the guy said, oh, I understand what you're feeling. I told him the problem and was like, this department will be good for you. So once it is time to transfer, which would be later that summer, then you should transfer to this department. So that was the deal. Because I had already kind of unlocked the code on how to get good grades, I was just working towards that. I was like, okay, at the end of this semester, I'm going to transfer. So if I want to transfer, then I need to have good grades. I need to pass these courses so that I would not have to take all the courses from the first and second year when I transfer. So I was just looking for ways to, you know, the shortcuts to ace my midterms, the shortcuts to um, ace my exams. I was looking for past questions to solve. I was just trying to be smart around it, not really focused on understanding the concept. The only course I understood the concepts were algorithms, AIT204 and MUH104. This was what my focus was. In addition to this, it was time to apply for internships. In HGTP, for computer engineering department, we have to do two internships. The total we have to do is 60 days. You can do 40, 20, 20, 40, or 30, 30. I did not even know we were supposed to do internships until a very good Turkish guy, very nice guy, just asked me one day, you know, tried to speak to me. I was like, yo man have you found a company for your internship and i was like oh do we have to do internship of course man and then he put me through it he explained how to go about it and then he also um, introduced me to his friend and that's how i finally made my first turkish friends don't forget we had spent the first year online so we came together for the first time in the second year and even some classes were still online so it was still difficult to you know walk up to anyone and make friends yeah those that had already made up their friends already had their groups and it was just difficult to just move into any other group so i just talked with my um, other international friend and we we're roughing things together he also didn't know <laughs> that we had to do internships eventually i started looking for companies i started applying gradually but then is that the applications had closed or they were not taking foreigners or i just didn't have the right qualifications i didn't want to apply for anything that would make me start going to write java or python so even if i found a good opportunity that could take foreigners i wasn't ready to apply for all that so i was looking for job opportunities that are regarding management or regarding it at most maybe they want me to use microsoft word powerpoint excel and all these things i wasn't going into anything related to computer engineering deeply but eventually i found a good internship um thanks to someone who recommended me to a company and they were very nice to accept me and let me work with them which i made a video about i'll link it up right here now this internship was a game changer why because in this internship i spent the whole of 30 days not doing anything related to coding actually when i got there they told me to write some code for a web interface and um, I just sat there not even able to write more than four lines. <laughs> I think I'm really terrible at coding here. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon me, I'm not I'm not terrible. I'm, it's, it's not just my thing. Like, you know, I, I could learn and do it, but I said, no, I, 
I know there are other things I can do better and there are other things I'm really interested in and I would rather study than study what I'm not interested in. So the supervisor realized that this guy is not really into coding, you know? Like when it comes to coding, my age is like this and I don't want to talk. But when it comes to other things like analysis, like what do you think can be done better here? What do you think can be improved here? Uh, what are the mistakes that you think have been made here? And then I'm able to um, speak about that and then um, he told me that there's something called um, SRS document. It's like a document you are going to write before any interface or any software is being developed and then it tells those that will develop it what the customer wants and how they should implement it the constraints the guidelines and everything is all listed in that document i was like oh really i, I really want to do this i remember that day i made so much research on it and i was just so happy that there's a part of computer engineering that requires more of writing than coding i just couldn't believe it i was like this is what i've always wanted you know like this is what i've been looking for i realized that this was all under software development software development life cycle and then i said okay this is where i want to go into definitely if i had not understood the concept of java python object-oriented programming coding principles i actually need the knowledge of this difficult part of computing to be able to write it down in basic simple english terms so that was when i started you know maybe reevaluating my decision to switch to another department and then i thought if i can achieve what i want without going into another department even though it's going to be quite difficult at least it will give me an edge there are so many business graduates and there are so many computer engineering graduates. If you want to do your master's in business administration, it's one of the easiest departments to get into. And if you want to go into software engineering as a career, there are so many opportunities out there. And there are just so many people who already know how to code properly. So what would set me apart from all these guys? I said, is the fact that I would have both, hopefully. So I thought, okay, if I can do my master's in business administration and I have my bachelor's in computer engineering, it will give me that solid foundation in computing so that I can apply those technical knowledge and then maybe use that to pursue a career in management or analysis or business analysis or business development. So this is where I'm currently at right now. I don't know if tomorrow it will change again, but then I, I think I finally started um, looking at the departments from a positive side that mm, this can actually work out. I can actually get something good out of this. All right, guys, now we have come to the end of our video and I want to recap by explaining that the reason I regretted studying computer engineering back then, about two semesters ago or one semester ago, is that I didn't have interest in this department, first of all, and I did not have interest in it because I did not know exactly what career opportunities I was going to pursue in computer engineering. But after realizing that, okay, there's some other part of computer engineering, there is software development part, which requires more of documentation, you know, analysis, um, requirements engineering, than coding, you know, um, or mathematical computations, then I finally started opening my heart to the department and seeing it in a different light. Another one was the difficulty level. I just couldn't imagine that I would finish Python in, in one semester. I couldn't imagine that I would finish Java and the whole of OOP in second semester. I can't believe that in one year we understand everything algor under algorithms and data structures. For me, it was difficult, but when you check, actually, these are things that people study in three months. If you're interested, you can finish it in one month. If you, are, if you are not interested, even three years will seem too much. So that was the issue. And then number three is lack of practical experience. So before studying computer engineering, I had never taken up a laptop to actually code myself. And that's one red flag you should check. So I've always said I wanted to study computer engineering, but for the wrong reasons. Like I thought, okay, it's the future, there's money. And then um, because I studied mathematics and for the mathematics in school and physics, computer engineering is just the right one. No, it doesn't work that way. You need to look at what you'll be studying, the future prospect, and see if you are actually um, interested in these departments by looking at the curriculums if you are going through the curriculum and you're saying hmm this looks nice that's not enough you actually need to go in there watch some youtube tutorials take some lessons be able to implement one or two things you know regarding that topic and see if you enjoy it so that way you'll be able to understand if truly you're interested in a particular department yeah so this is basically my story i hope you found this video very helpful now someone asks me <laughs> bowser would you choose computer engineering again and it's difficult to answer. Why? Because um, I have 
a good understanding now of what I want to do. And I asked myself that if I was in any other department, would I be able to gain the knowledge I need in order to pursue the kind of career I want? And I think yes, because let's say I was in business administration, for example, and um, after I graduate, I realized that hmm, I need some technical know-how to get into technical projects management. Because it's something I want to do, I think I would easily take up my laptop to learn how to code. Because I know that, okay, if I want to go into technical project management, I need to have some basic understanding of coding and how applications are being developed. Now, it has come in the difficult way, and I appreciate that because I don't think I would willingly ever, ever take up my laptop to learn how to code. Like, but now that I have done it because I was in a department, I had to do it. I'm on scholarship. I cannot lose my scholarship. Um, I have learned it the hard way. And I thank God that I, <laughs> that has come and gone. So now I don't even need to go through the stress of learning it again. But if I actually realize that for what I want to achieve, two years, three years, four years, 10 years down the line, I need this knowledge, I think I'll easily take it off. For example, I know I want to do YouTube, but video editing is really difficult. But then I still learned it and then I'm able to make videos like this. So um, will I choose it again? Maybe, <laughs> maybe not. Maybe for now, it's not easy for me to answer, but that's the um, logic I have behind not being able to answer. And what's the unfair advantage I get from this? Computer engineering is a prestigious department. Like, you're a computer engineering graduate, it's more like your future is secured. But that's if you're interested in what you're doing. If you're not interested, you wouldn't know what to apply for, and then everything will just look um, scattered to you. But it's true that you can get a job anywhere. Like, even um, a medical company once saw my CV and was like, oh, you're studying computer engineering, we would need you. That's the thing, like, it's good. It, when people see you, they be like, oh, you're studying computer engineering, he's a smart guy. It opens doors for you automatically. Like, th there's that unfair advantage. So I feel like staying here, getting what I need from that, plus the other unfair advantages that the department itself gives me as an opportunity, and then being able to combine those other extra abilities I have with the knowledge I gain from this will be able to set me apart from so many out there who are just either computer engineers or who are just into any other department. So I feel like um, it's a good opportunity and that's why I'm still here happily studying it and even when I find some difficult courses I know that okay the future is still bright like um, there's hope and then there's something good I'm looking towards so it's still okay for me. Alright guys that brings us to the end of this. I wish this was very helpful for you and that you will now be able to um, carefully analyze or evaluate yourself on which course to major in and afterwards decide whether it is right for you or not. Alright thank you very much for watching. If you want to watch my internship as a computer engineering student you can click on this video right here. Thank you very much I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.